Okay, now let's take a quick look at the overall histological structure of the liver and then we'll zoom in and take a look at the uh, structure of some of the features which you would be required to uh, know and to recognize. A few things to get straight about the liver before we begin. The first is that it's a massive organ in comparison to the size of sections which can be made for histological examination. So no section that we look at will give a complete overview of liver structure. Rather, what we're looking at is just a snapshot of a very small region of the liver to give some sense of the overall organization. Uh, the second thing to be aware of is that the particular liver which I'm using to demonstrate here has been treated in a special way to remove glycogen. And uh, this enables us to see details of the individual hepatocytes and indeed of the sinusoids and other structures, but it's not really representative of how the liver normally appears in uh, ordinary H and E stain sections of the type that you'll spend most of your time looking at. So you just need to be aware of that. The third thing is, is that the general structure of the liver organized as a series of hexagonal lobules is one which is useful from a descriptive perspective but has no relevance whatsoever from a clinical perspective. And so as we look at this liver here, which is a section of human liver, we won't be looking for hexagonal lobules uh, very much. <coughs> Rather what we'll concentrate on is identifying the structures which are the source of blood uh, being supplied to the liver tissue and which drain blood from the liver tissues. And then we will examine the relationship and arrangement of the hepatocytes as they relate to both of those structures. So here we're looking at a uh, section of uh, human liver. We can see first of all that there are a large number of what look like vascular spaces of varying sizes and degrees. Most of these we can't tell um, whether these are portal venules or portal veins or hepatic venules or hepatic veins, at least not at this magnification. We can identify the structures, at, even at this magnification, some structures known as portal canals, for example here and here and here. These are sometimes called portal triads, but there's more than three structures in each of these uh, so-called portal triads, so it's better to use the term portal canal. It's also perhaps a more um, clinically uh, meaningful uh, term. So these we can see here and here and here, and some of these structures we might guess are central venules, which will drain to the uh, hepatic veins, but we won't know till we look at higher magnification. So let's first increase in magnification a little bit. And here in this image, uh, what we can see is here's a portal canal uh, here, and we look at the structures in this in a moment. Here's a central venule, it looks like uh, here, perhaps a central venule here and a central venule here. And we can see that the hepatocytes themselves sort of radiate outwards from the central venules, although it's incorrect really to describe the arrangement of hepatocytes as they relate to central venules, because in fact their arrangement is much more intimately associated with the uh, portal canals, the structures which actually supply blood to them. So let's look at this particular portal canal and see what we can see as being uh, its constituents. So here we're on uh, 20x magnification. This very large uh, vessel which we see here lined by simple squamous uh, endothelium with no other wall structure to it is a branch of the portal vein, so this is a portal uh, venule. Accompanying the portal venule we would expect to find a branch of a hepatic artery, uh, a hepatic arteriole, and indeed here is the hepatic arteriole here. Uh, simple uh, squamous endothelial cells lining a lumen that has just one layer of uh, smooth muscle surrounding it. So a hepatic arteriole, portal venule. This structure here, it's a very small lumen lined by a simple cuboidal epithelium, is a bile ductule. So this is carrying portal blood to the lobule, this is carrying um, arterial blood to the lobule, and this is carrying bile away from uh, the lobule. The remaining structures we can see here are probably this and this, which are lymphatic uh, vessels, which uh, carry lymph from the uh, liver. And the other thing we can see is the pink material, which surrounds all of these vascular structures here and here and here. And this is connective tissue, and this connective tissue is contained within a space that surrounds all of the structures of the uh, portal canal, and this space is called the space of Moll. Here we see hepatocytes beginning to radiate out from the uh, portal canal. Here's a hepatocyte nucleus, here's one, here's one, here's one. And between the plates of hepatocytes are these open structures here, and these are the sinusoids. In the region of the uh, portal canals, the sinusoids are tortuous looking, and in fact form an anastomosing interconnected network with plates of hepatocytes anastomosing between them and forming the walls of this uh, network. 
work. As we move further away from the portal canal, the um, sinusoids begin to become longer and more uh, parallel, or appear longer and more parallel. So here's a sinusoid at the pointer here, extending down here. Here are the hepatocytes that surround uh, that sinusoid. And eventually these will converge on one or more of these um, uh, central uh, venules here, which in turn drain blood from the liver eventually to the uh, two hepatic veins. So we'll just uh, zoom in just a little bit on one of these central venules to see. So here's the central venule here. Here's um, endothelial cell, which is uh, lining it. Uh, this is probably a little bit of a pericyte or something. So a central venule, one of the distinguishing features of central venules is that they have little or no connective tissue uh, outside their wall, so no tunica adventitia. Here we see sinusoids that lead in. This sinusoid here is about to open into this uh, central venule. We can see the hepatocytes, which here look sort of foamy and uh, with some punctate material in the cytoplasm, but this is because the glycogen has been uh, washed out of them. We can see in the lumen of the sinusoids, for example here and here, these are sinusoidal endothelial cells, and elsewhere we can see larger looking cell nuclei like this one here, larger and rounder, and these are probably uh, Kupfer cells. Uh, there would also be present here um, perhaps here are ETO cells, but uh, these aren't easy to distinguish uh, in routine histological preparations. Finally, we should, um, one might expect, be able to see a space of DESA that separates the sinusoid lumen from the hepatocytes, but in fact the space of DESA is so small that it's next to impossible to see. The slightly darker staining little area here is probably a uh, space of DESA, and the darker staining represents the uh, connective tissue that can be seen in the space of DESA. Again, you get a sense for the organization here with blood uh, pouring from the portal venule and the hepatic arteriole, uh, percolating through the sinusoids and eventually converging on and draining into these uh, central um, uh, venules. Here's a still photograph I took from the uh, same section of liver that we were just looking at. And this is just to show perhaps how the notion of a hexagonal arrangement uh, or some sort of geometric arrangement of structures centered around a central venule uh, can be um, elucidated. So for example, here we have a, a central venule uh, and we see the radiating plates of hepatocytes extending outward from it, separated by the little spaces, which are the uh, sinusoids. And if we count up the portal canals which surround this particular one, there are the structures of a portal canal uh, here, and a portal canal here, and a portal canal here, and a portal canal here. And so we can see that there is in fact some sort of geometric looking arrangement. In this case it's kind of a diamond uh, shape which extends uh, around organized around this uh, central venule. But as I mentioned, from the perspective of uh, liver pathology, or indeed from the perspective of understanding the functional aspects of the liver, uh, the important structure to pay attention to is the uh, portal canal, this structure here, or I'm showing this one here. The classic description of the hepatic acinus of Rapoport that one gets in a textbook uh, describes the acinus as being on an axis between uh, two uh, portal canals. Um, as I've marked out uh, here. So here are the two portal canals. And on the other arms of the, or the other uh, ap aspect of the axis are uh, two central venules. So here's one central venule here. And here's the other uh, central venule here. And this is so a sort of a diamond shaped lobule as we can see here. And in the diamond shaped lobule, the uh, flow of blood extends from the axis, the short axis of the lobule here between the two uh, portal canals, extends outward from these portal canals toward the two central venules. In practical terms, and for um, in clinical terms, really blood flow is only considered in the context of a single um, uh, portal canal. And of course remember that bile flow is opposite to the direction of blood flow. That is, the hepatocytes in this region in here, which are secreting bile, that bile gathers in bile canaliculi and is carried slowly but surely and eventually into the bile ductule that forms the center of this particular uh, portal canal.